May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be always pleasing in your sight. O oh Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Please be seated. I want you to imagine for a moment that you're on your career at a conversation that comes from a time before the written word was a thing, before scripture was written down. And a young boy is talking to his mother. And he says to her, why is it that we are told to be careful of the people who live on the other side of the mountain? Well, they speak a different language. Why is it that they speak a different language? And that night, around the vine, the mother tells the family a story. She says, a long time ago, everyone spoke one language. And the people came together to to build a tower, a tower that would reach to the heavens. But as they built, they built with pride and anger in their hearts. And as the tower got taller, so too did their pride and their anger. Until eventually all they could hear was insults and fights. And all they could speak were words of pain to others. And so the tower fell, and the people spread, and the languages changed. Many, many, many years later, people came, and they spoke different languages. They grew up speaking all sorts of strange and foreign tongues. But they came to the city Jerusalem, and as they came, they all had an experience where, where some strange, odd men came out to talk to them about God. And they recognized a truth in the words that those men said. A truth that was buried so deep in their hearts it sounded like the language their mother had spoken to them as they were first learning to walk. The language of their home and the language of their heart was the language in which God had spoken to them. Now some of those people were still afraid or prideful or arrogant and so they went, I cannot hear that. The problem must be with those men. They must have already been drinking. But others let that seed rest in their hearts and turn to God. I thought I'd tell you a kid's story for today. <laughs> now, I wish, I wish that I had originally made that connection between the Old Testament story of the Tower of Babel uh, and Pentecost. But it's been a long tradition of the church that that which was broken by human actions and pride and greed in the Tower of Babel story is that which is repaired in the gift of Pentecost and the Holy Spirit that binds that which we broke. Like I say, I wish I, I can imagine being smart enough to come up with that on your own, but I didn't. But uh, I wish I'd be, because that's an amazing thing to think about, isn't it? That that which we broke, God repairs. That's the first thing. The second thing I wanted to talk about is how we often react to the Holy Spirit. And I notice, I notice that there's still fear. Now, there are a couple of reasons why we might be afraid. I, I remember at, um, in grade 12, I had a friend, and he was, and he was a tough kid. You know, he really was. He, 
his goal was to be in the army because that was regi might be regimented enough. Uh, you know, he liked the idea of running for hours with a heavy pack on him. He thought the idea of hazing rituals was a good way to build community. This kid was tough. Nice, but, you know, mean and tough. And anyway, he goes to this church, and he comes back, and he's pale. <laughs> they were weird. They were crazy. It was all this weird gibberish they were talking. And I grew up in the Anglican church, and I went, it's just a liturgy. You know, we just say odd prayers. He said, no, no, man, that wasn't even English. And he'd gone to a church that had a particular expression of faith that was it had things like speaking in tongues, like a glossolalia, uh, people being what they what the term is slain in the spirit, falling over. And he was frightened. He thought that was very foreign. I suspect that there's an element in, in most of us that's a bit like that. We've seen some of that sort of thing. You might have seen it on TV with with the televangelists, and it's often when you see the worst side associated with uh, this whole notion of send us your money and God will forgive you your sins. Or, or even better yet, send us your money and God will send you more. <laughs> it worked for them. Uh, and so we don't want to be, because we don't want to be associated with the worst parts of that, we're a little frightened of what might happen if we let the Holy Spirit into our lives. I think that's fair. But, but the deeper fear, the fear that's underneath the fear, is that perhaps if we let the Holy Spirit into our lives, we might be asked to see and to change. And nobody likes change. Nobody likes to change the structures in our lives. An example I heard recently was one about fashion, all the time. But some people are still very much into fashion, aren't they? You can see the change underneath the change. And if we let the Holy Spirit into our lives, we're frightened that we might be asked to change the structures underneath. Because Jesus says, the Spirit will guide you into truth. And sometimes the truth says, the way you have been is not good enough. There's an interesting thing there about judgment. And I'm pretty sure I've used this analogy with you before. A lot of people have this picture of judgment, like a, a law court system. Judge Judy, you've seen the show? They're always very classy. Um, but we think that's judgment. But a better, a better picture of judgment is a jeweler who can look at something and tell you its worth. Or maybe a different TV show, Antiques Roadshow. Have you seen it? Mm -hmm. oh, I love that. There's some crazy stuff they find in the attics, isn't there? But they take it to an expert, and the expert says, I can tell you things about this you do not know. I can, I can see its value. I can judge it, because I know it well. Judgment. Because quite often, we want to put a sugar coating around stuff rather than deal with it. Quite often we want to uh, pretend the darkness in us isn't there. And if we let the Holy Spirit into our lives, that light might shine in places we don't want it to. So we're frightened. Christ says you don't need to be frightened. Not because there's no darkness in you, not because there's nothing that needs to be repaired, but because the Holy Spirit comes to repair that which we have broken. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.